Oasis of Life Ministries, and welcome to Resurrection Day. Amen. This is the day the Lord was resurrected out of hell after paying the price for our sins. Give him a big, big shout of got a special this morning. Tammy's going to just join us here and sing for us. Commander Tammy. So make it place.
Aleluia. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Open up to the book of Ephesians, if you would. What an atmosphere in this place right now. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our most gracious and precious Heavenly Father. We give you thanks, first of all, for the plan of redemption that you put forth to save mankind. And Jesus, we give you the praise for following that plan to its fullest. For becoming our sins, for becoming the curse. And taking our sins and the curse to hell. And spending the time in hell to complete the mission. And serve the punishment that we rightfully deserve. But we thank you. We thank you for the power of the resurrection that came that came while you were there in the midst of torment and God said enough is enough it's fulfilled and the Holy Spirit of glory the Holy Spirit of grace raised our Lord and resurrected him out of that pit of hell Father we thank you Jesus we thank you this morning that you are alive and well and seated in the right hand of authority in heaven. And we praise you for it that you have given us life and resurrected our life. Give us instruction this morning on the covenant of grace that we begin to understand that this is a covenant of grace for us and that your blood is what ratified this covenant to us. We thank you for it. We praise you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ephesians. And I want to read a scripture here out of verse chapter 1, verse 9. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will. Talking about God. He's making known to us the mystery of his will. According to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself. It was God's good pleasure to put forth this plan of redemption and bring life to each and every one of us. Now drop over to chapter 2 and verse 4. But God. Aren't you glad there's a but God? Yeah. Amen. Who is rich in mercy with his great love wherewith he loved us. Mercy, love, love, agape. In the, in the Greek, in the Hebrew, it's hasid. It is God's giving love to us. It was love that hung on that cross. Amen. Amen. Jesus literally said, I love man enough, I'm going to take all of the punishment for their sins, their transgressions, their iniquity. I'm going to take it all. Amen. And he did. Even when we were dead in sins, he loved us. And has quickened or made us alive together with Christ. By grace you are saved. And he has raised us up together. Oh, i got to read that again. He has raised us up. He has raised us up. We've been raised out of that pit of hell. We've been raised out of the sins and the problems and the trials of sin. We've been raised up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, the seat of authority. And somebody might be sitting there thinking right now, boy, you just said that we 
that raised out of all the troubles and all the problems. Well, they're here. Would you agree that there are some problems in this earth right now? Amen. They're here. They're surrounding us. But here's the point. We have been raised above that. We don't have to let those things overcome us. Amen. Now watch the next verse. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Jesus Christ. God wants to show you the riches of his grace through his kindness. Verse 8. For by grace are you saved through faith. Let me read that again. By grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God. We have been gifted by God with his grace. With this covenant of grace. Let me read this quote from Dr. Dennis Burke. Throughout the centuries of human history, God has remained committed to lifting his people out of the limits of their own ways and into the limitlessness of God's great ability. Hallelujah. We're limited. God's not. And God wants to take that unlimited presence and power that he has and work it through us. Amen. A covenant. What is a covenant? Well, a covenant joins two parties together and it brings the strengths and weaknesses of each into the other situation. And here's the point. One's strengths are overcoming the other's weakness. And here's God taking us into his covenant that he made with Jesus. We bring all our weaknesses and he gives us all his strengths. Amen. Amen. What a deal. Amen. What a deal we've got. Let me read this Ephesians 2 8 out of the Amplified. Out of the Amplified Classic Version. For it is by free grace, God's unmerited favor, that you are saved, delivered from judgment, and made partakers of Christ's salvation through your faith. And this salvation is not of yourselves, of your own doing. It came not through your own striving, but it is a gift of God. So the salvation is a gift as well. The grace is a gift. The faith is a gift. God is gift, gifting us with everything we need to overcome what's going on out there. Grace. We can say grace is the influence of God's word. The influence of God's word that brings power, it brings his favor, and all his provision. Grace is really everything God provided to us. Salvation. Hmm. Salvation gives us the opportunity to overcome the judgment of sin. Romans says that the wages of sin is death, so the judgment of sin is death. Let's not be like Adam and Eve and not realize something. When Eve ate of that fruit, Adam was looking at her and saying, huh, nothing happened. So I can eat too. Because God said that as soon as we eat of the fruit, we'll die. What Adam 
didn't even realize as soon as they ate of that fruit, they began to die inside. They began to destroy and bring death to the relationship that they had with God. Folks, sin creates and begins the death process. Death isn't always instantaneously. It's a process. And so when sin occurs, it begins to create a process. Well, we get all this, the grace, the influence of God's word. We receive the salvation by faith. Faith is also a process. Faith begins with hope and expectation. We read something or we hear something from the Bible and, and we get some hope, we get some expectation that that is possible. After we dwell on that for a bit, we start to trust it. And we build our trust in God. As we build our trust, we believe. And as we believe, faith comes. So it's a process. And when faith really comes, we start to see the results of the grace. Now, this covenant. Jesus shed his blood to seal this new covenant. The word covenant means to actually cut an agreement where blood flowed. And, and let me use one of our agreements that we have in this world today, and it's called marriage. Marriage is a covenant. And I'm going to say this, and I thought years ago I'd never have to say this, but i got to say it this way. <laughs> marriage is a covenant between a man and a woman. Amen. Yeah. Amen. In, in case you haven't noticed, we're different. <laughs> we're different. But here's the thing. What you do is bring those differences together where she has some weakness, he has strength. Where he has weakness, she has strength. Yeah. So we bring that all together in unity. And what have you got then? Strength upon strength. Amen. And I, I was kind of thinking about this and I thought, I was there, I watched as Lynn gave birth to all four of our daughters. And I thought at the time, I'm sure glad I don't have to do that. Amen. And all the men said, Amen. Amen. That's a strength we don't have, gentlemen. That's the strength they have. See, we have to realize, and especially, let me talk to the men for just a moment, the male part of the whole deal. Folks, they're not so weak that they got to take and walk two steps behind us. I was called upon them several years ago to preach a service at another church on marriage. And my first comment was, marriage is not a two-way street. And boy, did I get some looks. Because that's the way it's been taught. It's been taught a two-way street. It's not. It's a one-way street with both husband and wife going in the same direction. Amen. Like here's one. Well, any covenant and our being brought into this covenant with God and with Jesus 
is a one-way street going in the direction that the Holy Spirit is trained to take us in. Yes. Shout amen to that. <laughs> Jesus shed his blood for you and I to bring us to a place of salvation. Three purposes of his blood to be shed for this. Number one, to ratify this new covenant. Number two, to cleanse the heart of the sinner. Number three, he shed his blood to heal. Now, when we talk about healing, we think physical sickness and disease. He shed his blood to heal our spirit, our soul, our body, our finances, and our relationships. He shed that blood for a healing to every aspect of our life. Amen. Amen. All of it. That's the whole purpose of his shedding of his blood. He shed his blood seven times with seven specific purposes. And I'm not going to get into that right now. But they cover all of our life. Okay. Every bit of it. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Turn over to the book of Hebrews. And the 10th chapter. My, my, after what we heard in Bible study and discussed this morning, I want to come out here and just continue that. Amen. Whew. That was good. Good stuff. Hebrews chapter 10. Verse 16. God speaking through the Apostle Paul. I believe Paul wrote this book. This is the covenant that I will make. God's making covenant with someone. And he said, this is the covenant that I will make with them. This is the covenant I will make with them. Who's the them? The them that he's making covenant with are the ones who will receive fully the sacrifice that Jesus made at that cross in hell and then through the resurrection. Amen. Romans 10, 9 and 10. Believing in the fact that Jesus, according to uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 21, the Bible says that he who knew no sin became sin for us. Galatians 3.13 says he was made to be the curse for us. So he took on him the whole sin of all mankind and in that became the curse of that sin. Are we listening this morning? You got your spiritual ears open this morning? Amen. We're going to dig into some meat, some strong meat this morning. Is that okay? So that's the them. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days. Those who receive that, say of the Lord, I, let me stop. After those days, after what days? That covenant was solidified, ratified by the blood that Jesus shed at that cross and even before when he went into that garden. It started right there. And then he shed his blood throughout that whole time and on that cross and then went to hell. The punishment for sin is death. Death is really we, we think of death on a, on a physical basis that, boy, when we die, it's all over. No, it's not. Your spirit and your soul is going to live through eternity. Amen. Amen. Now, the question is, where is it going to live? We have a choice here. To have our spirit and soul live in heaven with God. Or exist 
in hell with Satan. Amen. See, hell was not made for man. Amen. It was made for Satan because of his rebellion against God and heaven. Gosh, there should never be a man, and I use that term fully, there should never be a man in hell. Never. But one went there. Hello? There was a man went there to pay the price for us. Amen. Those of you who have a mortgage on your house, if some person went to the bank tomorrow morning and paid off that mortgage for you, how would you feel? Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great. Hallelujah. Glory. Might be a little dancing going on. Yeah. Might be a little shouting and praising going on. Amen. Well, let me tell you something about Jesus. He paid the price for our entire life. Amen. Oh, my Jesus. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them. Verse 17, their sins and iniquities, I, God, will remember no more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Satan shouts to God. Well, do you remember what they did, such and such? And God says, no. Hallelujah. <laughs> nope, don't remember it. So there's nothing to be held against them. God's coming would ultimately bring his influence and his presence from dwelling among men to dwelling in men. Right. You're born again, you got God living on the inside of you in the form of the Holy Spirit. Right. He's everything God is. Amen. Living right here, inside of us, in covenant with us. The power of any covenant is no less than the power of the blood by which it was established. Right. Say that again. The power of, the, of any covenant is no less than the power of the blood by which it was established. God says by grace we are saved through faith. Grace, we're in a covenant of grace today. Oh, hallelujah. So it probably would um, be a great idea for us to understand the grace of God. Amen? Amen. Grace is central to the heart attitude of God. It's grace that moves him towards people. What did we just read? He loved us. Even when we were in sin. He loved us. But he couldn't do a lot for us until we accept what Jesus did at that cross. God's grace is God's willingness to help us in any situation, through anything. Grace is his power. So it's all of this stuff. It's, it's, grace is also the path that the Holy Spirit leads us on, and we need to walk that path by faith. There's a grace path. And that path leads us to God's spiritual power. To his glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Remember Moses? God, show me your glory. I'll see you in glory. God said, all right, I'm, I'm going to put you right here. I'm going to 
set you on his rock. Oh, there's so much to that. And then I'm going to show you my glory. And what God do? Pass by. He showed him. He showed Moses himself. Right. Amen. And the Bible says God showed him his goodness. God's goodness is his glory. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is great to me. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, put that in your heart. All the time, God is good to me. Amen. God wants to be good to you. Now, I just made the statement that the power of a covenant is no less than the power of the blood which it was established in. A blood covenant, once established, can never be annulled. Let's take two businessmen for an example. One businessman has a, an ability to work and design and, and, and make things. And the other businessman, he, he can, doesn't have that ability, but he's got an ability to work the financial area. When they come together, this first guy might be weak in the financial area, but he's got a strength on how to make that product. The other guy, <coughs> he's got a weakness where he can't make that product. But he knows how to operate the finances to it. They come together and you got two strengths in it. Amen. All right. God, the covenant that we are in, this covenant of grace, the new covenant. And we're going to take a look at both of these for just a moment here shortly. There's an old covenant and a new covenant. Now, we've called them in the church an Old Testament and New Testament. I like the word covenant myself better. Yeah. It says so much more. Amen. Amen. God made this new covenant between him and Jesus. <coughs> and we get to come along with Jesus into the new covenant. Because of his blood and us receiving it. Now think about it. Would God or Jesus ever break this covenant? Not a chance. Never going to happen. So you and I, we can't annul this covenant. We can step out of it, but we can step right back in. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And here's my point. Why would you ever want to step out of it? Oh, glory. Now, any blood covenant has Three basic reasons for being cut. Let's go back to that marriage covenant. It's really got three basic reasons for us to get in covenant a man with a woman. Number one, love and devotion. An expression of dedication forever. Um, an expression of dedication Forever. I married Lynn. We're on our 51st year. And there's times, and I'm sure there's been times for her, what did I do? <laughs> but we're in covenant. And we're not going to break that covenant. No matter what the other woman has done, we're not going to break that covenant. 
We're going to stay in that covenant because we made a commitment to it. Amen. Number two, protection. Love and devotion, protection. Where the strong become available to the weakness of the other. Whatever that is, folks, it's not always the man being the strong one in every area. Hello? But I will tell you this. A place of warning to anybody, you go to attack my wife or my daughters or my grandchildren, you go find me right in the middle of it. Right smack dab in the middle of it. I've told her many times, if I ever saw somebody raise a gun to her, I would stand between that person and her. And they would probably have to shoot me to stop the process. But see, I know my God. I got a covenant with him. There was a man came into John Hagee's service right in the church, ran right up to the platform, and I had an opportunity several years ago to meet John Hagee in person. He's not a big fellow. He's a big man. This guy was standing at the edge of the platform, some about six feet away from John. Pulled out a gun and emptied it. Point blank, six feet from him, emptied it. Not one bullet hit John Hagee. They found the bullets laying all over the platform. Not one of them touched them. Why? John Hagee has a shield of faith around him. You aren't going to touch him. And there's other stories about those kind of things. That a minister came up to me one time in a service. I think I shared this possibly last week. Pointed at me and says, what are you going to do if some guy comes in your church with a gun and says you need to renounce Jesus? Or I'm going to shoot you. You might as well fire away. Quite frankly, you'd probably be doing me a service if you hit me because I'd be going home. <laughs> Amen. Well, that doctor, and, and we know him, we, we've been with his practice for a time. When that doctor nine years ago looked at me and said, You have stage four cancer, he had tears in his eyes telling me. I'm sitting there. He looked at me. He says, that didn't even affect you. He said, no. And he was a Christian man as well. I said, I'm just thinking. I might just be going home. That ain't all bad. But when I got with Linda and the girls, they said, you ain't leaving now. <laughs> so we made the decision to stay. And you're right. Nine years later, totally cancer free. Amen. 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 How'd that happen? I got a savior. Amen. I got a healer. Amen. I got a provider. And so do you. Amen. Amen. Number three. Equality. Oh, this is a big one. Equality. One will not take advantage of the other. Let me say that again. One will not take advantage of the other. So if one of the, the um, persons in the covenant, man or the woman, they start going the extra mile. Try to bless that other person. Then the person who's being blessed should not be taking advantage of. Actually, inside the marriage, folks, we ought to be doing our best to out-bless each other. <laughs> Amen. I want to be a blessing to her. And I want to see the blessing she is to me. Amen. Folks, we're in covenant with God. 
God is a blessing to us. He said in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3, He has given us all spiritual blessings. All of them are ours. And down through the next few weeks, we're going to talk about how we, in this covenant of grace, can be a blessing to God. Which we can be. Amen. In all three of these, all that one has becomes the property and possession of the other. When I married Lynn, my goodness, when I married Lynn 51 years ago in September, I had, gosh, I had a 1967 red Mustang. Yeah. Whew. Wow, I liked it, Tom. Woo, that was nice. That car became her car. I had a stereo system, nice stereo system. That became hers. I had a television. That became hers. Now, part of the problem with all that was I had bank notes on all of those. Those became hers, too. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> but all my life, she could drive my car wherever she wanted to, whenever she wanted to. All that, all that became hers. Amen. Folks, when we entered into the covenant of God, everything God has belongs to us. Right. He has offered it all to us. Now here's the other side of that. Have we offered everything we are to Him? We're going to do something this morning, real quick. We are going to contrast the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. Turn in your Bibles to the book of Deuteronomy, chapters 27 and 28. And I've asked a couple of people to come up and help me. So Rob, if you would bring your Bible, and Bill, if you would bring your Bible... Where's the handheld one? Right here. Now, Rob and Bill are, they represent the tribes, the leaders of the tribes of Israel. Okay? I'm Moses this morning. Okay? Moses is about to. Talk about the covenant and get the covenant lined up. All right? So what he does is he takes six of the tribes of Israel and he tells those six tribes to go get in. We're, we're all down in the valley here, guys. Three million people. But there's a mountain on each side. So use your imagination. Here's a mountain, and here's a mountain. So God, Moses says to those six tribes, he says, now I want you to go up into the mountain of Ezerim. Okay? And I want you to stand. Go ahead and grab that mic. Oh, you want to do it. And you are going to pronounce to the people the blessing of the covenant. Okay, so find Deuteronomy 28. The other six tribes, you're going to go into this mountain of Ebal, and you are going to pronounce the curse to the people. Sorry, Rob. But... <laughs> All right. <laughs> What's going on? Moses wants to know, wants the people to know that there's a blessing in this covenant, but if you break it, there's a curse. See this covenant was between God and man. So Moses hmm. Where am I here? To get on the right page. Deuteronomy 27 verse 4. 
verse 9. And Moses and the priests, the Levites, spake unto all Israel, saying, Take heed and hearken, O Israel, this day. You are become the people of the Lord your God. You shall therefore obey the voice of the Lord your God, and do his commandments and his statutes, which I command you this day, and Moses charged the people the same day. And again, he put some in Urizim and some in Ebal. And in chapter 28, verse 1, It shall come to pass, if ye shall hearken unto diligently unto the voice of the Lord your God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command you this day, that the Lord your God will set you on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on you and overtake you, if you shall hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God. We're just going to read a couple of those. The blessing, Deuteronomy 28, 7. The Lord shall cause my enemies to rise up against thee, to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way, and flee before thee seven ways. Ooh, glory. But then he turns... And he says to the other, now pronounce the blessing. Go ahead, Rob, verse 15 in chapter 27. It's a curse. Curse. Pronounce the curse. The curse. The curse. Curse is the man who makes any graven or molded image an abomination to the Lord, the work of the hands of the craftsman, and puts in a secret place. And all the people shall answer and say, Amen. Now. Can we make a graven image today out of some things? Yeah. We can put a lot of things ahead of God. Yeah. Mm. <clears throat> then he turns back to the other, and Bill, if you would, verse 8, the blessing. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee mm -hmm. in thy storehouses, and in all that thou settest thine hand unto he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God hath given thee. And then he turned and said, The curse. Cursed is he who does not confirm all the words of this law by doing them. And all the people shall say, Amen. Oof. In other words, he's going back and forth like this until the whole blessing and the whole curse is announced. And look at what they're saying. Now, say amen to that. In other words, so be it. That's the way it's going to be. All right. So what is he saying with this last one? Cursed be he that confirms not all the words of this law to do them. What did God tell Joshua? Meditate night and day in my word so you can observe to do and make your way successful. Gentlemen, thank you. Would you give them a big hand? Now that's the Old Covenant. Turn to Galatians chapter 3. How many of you know things have changed? <laughs> Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3 verse 13. Christ, the anointed one of God, with his anointing, has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Being made a curse for us. And as we said, 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, He who knew no sin became sin for us. So when he became sin, he was made the curse as well. All those curses that were on that old covenant were laid upon Jesus. Now listen close. There is no curse to the new covenant. Amen. There's only blessing. So if we keep ourselves in the covenant and follow the covenant, there's no curse. Right. He redeemed us from that curse. Right. Amen. For what purpose? So the blessing that was on Abraham 
might come on the nations through Jesus Christ that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. The promise of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit in Hebrews chapter 10 is called the Spirit of Grace. And in Romans 6, the Bible says it was God's glory. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of glory who raised Jesus out of hell. Amen. And he did the same for you and I. Thank you. We were bound for hell till we accepted Jesus. We don't have to be on that path anymore. Amen? Amen. Now, brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man disannuls or adds thereto. Now he's saying, okay, but he's saying it's a man's covenant. Uh-huh. Jesus came to this earth as a man. There's a man seated in the throne in heaven today. His name is Jesus Christ. He is the man that God made the covenant with. Yes. And he Amen. will not break it. Break it. Amen. Amen. Thank the Lord. We just get to come along for the ride, folks. Hallelujah. Woo, glory. Verse 16. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not, and to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. Christ was God's seed. Okay? Now, folks, we can't stop reading there. Go over to verse 26 for time's sake. For you are all the children of God by faith. In Christ Jesus. For as many as, of you as have been baptized or immersed into Christ, the anointed one, with his anointing, have put on that anointing. That's the whole armor of God in Ephesians 6. Now, don't misread and miscalculate verse 28. There's neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. Well, there are Greeks and there are Jews. Amen. There are people in bondage and people who are free, right? Mm -hmm. And the last I looked, they're still male and female. Amen. What he's talking about, it doesn't matter what your ethnic background is. It doesn't matter where you are established right now, whether you're in bondage or not. It doesn't matter whether you're a man or a woman, a male or a female. You are all going to be respected and treated by God the same. Yeah. Amen. Because of Jesus. So you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you be Christ's. You belong to the anointed one with his anointing. Then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the covenant promise. Amen. Whatever that covenant promise is, it is ours today. We are heirs with it. Romans chapter 8 says we are joint heirs with Jesus. To be a joint heir means whatever God gave him is available to you and I today. Right now. Amen. Amen. That's what his blood did for us. It ratified this covenant. The covenant of grace. Go over to Matthew 26. Larry, if you would, would you go back and get Commander Tammy and the children? Matthew 26. We are going to, here in the service, and we want you to stay with us, we're going to partake of the covenant element. So if you'd like to get that, get that ready for yourself, 
a little juice, a little cracker of bread. We're going to partake of the covenant elements right now. Let me read this out of Matthew 26. They're all sitting here at that point when Jesus, at what we call the Last Supper. Verse 26. And as they were eating, Jesus took the bread, blessed it, empowered it, break it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take it. This is my body. And he took the cup. And he gave thanks, or again, he blessed it. Gave it to them, saying this, Drink ye all of it. Drink all of it. In other words, folks, Drink every purpose that Jesus shed his blood for in your life. Amen. Paul wrote it this way. He, he said there's healing in this covenant that we're about to take here. These covenant elements that we're about to take. Verse 28. For this is the blood of my, the new covenant which is shed for many for the remission of sins, remission of sins doesn't cover sins. It wipes it out. God said, this is the covenant I will make. I will remember no more your sins and iniquities. Amen. Bill and Rob, come on. Help us this morning. Nelson, if you got something.
He's given me life.
want to go ahead and pray over the tithes and offerings this morning. And we want to go once again, we want to turn to Romans chapter 8. Romans. A couple of passages, I'll be quick as possible here. You know, a lot of people make a lot of plans for family and things on Resurrection Sunday. Excuse me, I just can't bring myself to say Easter. <laughs> I'm not sure what that means, but I do know what resurrection means. The resurrection of our Lord from hell to life, from death to life. And he took me from death to life, and you as well. Romans chapter 8, verse 2. We talked about this over the last few weeks. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. So if I'll learn something about this law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus and I'll apply it to my life, I will be free from the law of sin and death. Amen. I've heard some teach in the church we're still sinners. Well, you might be. We're not. John, amen. amen. We're not sinners. Now, can a born-again individual commit a sin? Yeah, but that doesn't make you a sinner. You ain't a sinner anymore. You receive what Jesus did. Amen. But there are some things that go out there, laws in his kingdom that apply to us today, that if we will follow those laws, it'll work for us. Go over to Matthew chapter 11. Would you say that there's some Violence going on in the world today. Yeah. Matthew chapter 11, verse 12. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. Now, John the Baptist came proclaiming that Jesus was coming. And there was one of those who got violent with this whole thing. He's talking about kingdom of heaven, kingdom of God. He's talking about that kingdom that God has for you and I. Luke said the kingdom of God is in us. Now look, until the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violent take the kingdom of God by force. We're going to have to get more forceful with what the covenant of God promises us. Right. He promised us provision. Amen? Amen? And part of that provision is financial provision. Right. We're going to have to get violent. <laughs> Satan doesn't want to give up the money and the gold that he's stolen. But it's time to put it back in the hands of the church where it belongs. Amen. That's God. God said all the silver and gold is mine. Right. Doesn't belong in the hands of, of Satan. Right. I can see it as clear as I can see anything right now. This whole COVID thing that's going on is about the economy. going to end up making the money off of all this? The pharmaceutical company. Doesn't belong in their hands. Belongs in ours. Right. See, yeah. we've got the avenue to the healing power of Jesus' blood over that COVID-19. Amen. And it ain't going to cost anybody but a little bit of their time. Amen. Time to come into church. Time to have hands laid on you. Well, you mean you lay hands on somebody with COVID-19? I'd lay hands on somebody with leprosy. 
leprosy. Yeah. Why? Because I know where the blood of Jesus is. Amen. Amen. Not worried about that stuff. Amen. So we're going to have to get violent with our finances. What do you mean? We're going to have to get forceful when we give our tithes and our offerings. And a good suggestion on the tithes and offerings when you make out your tithe checks or whatever, you put your money in that envelope, husband and wife, get together, put your hands on that together, and speak together over that, and take communion in your own home. I thought we could only take communion in church. Well, you thought wrong. <laughs> Are you born again? Amen. Blood bought? Holy Ghost filled? Yes. Then you can partake of communion in your own home. Amen. It's time we took back this country and took that back the finances that belong to us from Satan. Amen. Amen. Bill and Rob, come on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. I'll be right there, fellas. Just stay. Romans 8.19 says, for the earnest expectation of the creature of the world, the creation, waits, it's waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. We've seen weather upheavals all over the world. Verse 22 says, for we know that the whole creation groans and travails in pain together until now, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. We are that manifestation. Amen. Amen. The whole creation is waiting for that. Oh, hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you that we've had an opportunity this morning to come and to financially give our tithes and offerings to support your kingdom work. Jesus, they're in your hands. Bless this offering to the work of this ministry. And I ask you, to bless this offering, these tithes and offerings, right back to these precious people, meeting every financial need in abundance. And I thank you for it. I praise you for it. And I thank you that our prayer requests are all being answered with a yea and amen. And we praise you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Did you get anything out of this this morning? Amen. Stand up and give the Lord a shout of praise. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. We thank you for those of you on Facebook who have joined us today. Those who will be joining us later on YouTube, we thank you for joining us. Get in agreement with us. We're here to help you. If you need prayer, you need anything, contact us through oasisoflifeministries.com and let us know what you need. We will pray with you. I had a lady about two months ago contacted me through there. I contacted her back. She gave me her email. We talked back and forth. She even called me on the phone. I prayed with her. She had cancer, was given something like six weeks to live. She is out in another state. And I heard from her here a few weeks ago. No cancer in her body at all. They have canceled the death sentence that was on her because God touched her with the blood of Jesus. Glory. God bless you. May you be blessed and highly favored of the Lord throughout this week. Hallelujah.